feel like I'm gonna fumble over my words because I'm not sure that this is gonna come across the way that I intend it. So hear my heart. It's easier to be an ally than to have a lived experience or have something directly affect you. This should be obvious. It's easier mentally, spiritually, physically, to stand in solidarity and fight for someone or something when you can take action but then go to sleep and hang up your coat without the emotional and generational trauma. You can rest easy. It's so much easier to be an ally than to have a lived experience. I also bring this up because although it's natural for me to want to stand up and fight for other people, it feels odd or wrong almost when I stand for something that directly touches my life. It's so much more emotionally taxing to talk about appropriation when it comes to my native heritage. There's a sense of not wanting to seem or be too much or expecting too much when I call people out and defend sacred medicines. When I point out that someone's spiritual practices may be oppressive, it's awkward. It affects me directly, or my heritage, my culture, my ancestors. I get like this fear jerk response to just look the other way because somewhere along the way, I learned that I'm not allowed to take personal offense. Somewhere along the way, I learned that the only fights worthy of being fought for are other people's battles. Standing for communities I don't even belong in, which I know, like that's, that's what an ally is. And that's my point. And the fact that I don't experience this abandonment feeling when it comes to my heritage as much as other marginalized people do certainly speaks of my privilege, my white, passing privilege. I can't deny it. And because of this, I've learned so much more what it is to be a true ally. To fight, one, even harder for the people groups and communities that are marginalized and oppressed, communities that I don't belong in. But two, I'm learning what it is to stand up for something even if I am the one getting hurt. Perhaps, dare I say, especially if I'm the one being hurt. I'm not used to that. I was taught to turn the other cheek. In the past when someone would do something hurtful, I would just brush it under the rug, abandon myself and my own intuition. I wouldn't make a sound until this hurt was inflicted on someone else. Then I would let all hell break loose. I'd fight to the death until justice prevailed. I'd tend to their wounds. I'd shed tears with them. But for me, I was so foreign. Why is that? Why do I feel like I'm not worthy to be fought for? Why do I feel like my cause has to be so mighty in order to have a voice? Why do I have to tell myself to do it for the future generations? Which is important, but why am I not enough? Why don't my wounds count? Why do I seek healing for all, but feel like I need all for my healing to matter? I've had the honor to speak uh, about my indigenous heritage now through direct messages on Instagram, through interviews for podcasts, in-person conversations. I've had lots of discussions concerning appropriation, history, heritage, spirituality, and in so many ways, I'm still uncovering so much. And although there's more and more information and writing and articles out there, Native American culture is still amongst one of the most undocumented. My resource list is growing, but I still crave more. And if you're indigenous and you're watching this, Maybe you can relate to this feeling, but I have this intense expectation for myself just to know, to be born knowing, like my ancestors will just like download all the right information into my head. And although there is a lot of that and there's been a lot of talk on epigenetics, generational trauma, these things are real. And I've talked about how I feel connected to my ancestors and that's kind of how I see God, but I can't pretend to even touch the surface of all the things that I desire to know. It's all incredibly nuanced. Part of my reconstructing and healing really began with the uprise of the Black Lives Matter movement. First, I, I broke. I was a wreck. But then I really started to press into my indigenous heritage, listening and learning from other indigenous people and like I said, my ancestors within and throughout. This is where a lot of my healing started to take place. I've begun to understand how so much of the faith that I once resonated with was colonized and how a lot of the Christian religion that I associated with was built by my ancestors' oppressors. Recognizing that a lot of today's Christianity was manipulated, is manipulated, and contorted to suit a white supremacist 
narrative. That all sounds like bad stuff. I mean, because it is. But something about recognizing what to relanguage and decolonize and dismantle, it gave me words for my feelings and tactics to handle my frustrations. And somehow, once again, gave me a little bit of hope that things can be better. And maybe we just have to dismantle the whole thing, which y'all know I'm fine to do. But I have to recognize that I am worth fighting for. My pain is great enough to be healed and my healing is important enough for me to never give up. I'm worth it. You're worth it. We can do this together. You can do this. I can do this. Thanks for watching. Until next time.